When I first started playing guitar, I thought big. I decided I was going to become the fastest guitarist ever. But then I heard Yngwie, dream extinguished. But I still wanted to write great songs and have technique good enough to create anything I could think of. And I knew one technique I would want in my bag of tricks was sweep picking. I spent the first five years still had to learn the fundamentals of strumming scales. Plus I was lazy and didn't practice all that much. So when I went to college at age 18 to study classical guitar, I also started practicing electric guitar more seriously. I studied Satriani's legato technique on a daily basis and began recording my own instrumental masterpieces on a Mac laptop I checked out from the music library on campus. I quickly learned how limited I was in expressing my own musical ideas and knew I needed to practice more. As a freshman in college, I also discovered one of the things that made Ingve so great was his unparalleled sweep picking technique. So I started practicing my sweeps and got nowhere. For 10 years, I practiced sweeping on a regular basis, a pretty regular basis, mixed in with periods of giving up on it. I could not make any headway. It was the single hardest thing I had ever attempted. Then at around age 30, I got so frustrated by my lack of sweepy weepies that I tripled down on practice. I went from practicing an hour a day to three hours a day, and I committed an hour every day to just sweep picking. And I went slow, really, really slow. Like perfect practice, no mistakes. If I messed up, I slowed down more. I turned on YouTube videos of Markiplier playing through Resident Evil games to cope with the endless boredom of the repetition. After about 45 minutes of slow practice each day, I'd play speed bursts for about 15 minutes. Then little by little, I experienced progress. I started to actually notice the improvements. So after a decade of almost no progress, here's what I did to get results. An hour a day of sweep picking, 45 minutes of that was slow and perfect. 15 minutes was speed burst. Then I picked only a few select ideas. I didn't try to do lots of different sweep arpeggio patterns. I did some three string patterns and some five string patterns, and I kept it to the easier shapes of minor, diminished, and minor seven, which are even easier. And I'm gonna show you which ones you can get started with practicing. All right, so let's get started with a few of the sweep arpeggio ideas that I used to be successful in my own sweep picking journey. Uh, there's just a handful, and they are going to be minor and diminished arpeggios. Those are the easiest shapes to get started with, and we're only gonna be doing three string and five string shapes. Uh, I find that four string and six string are quite difficult, and two string, yeah, it just isn't enough. I like three string and five string, so I stick with those. Here's our first one. It's gonna be an A minor shape like this. Okay, so what's happening is we're doing frets 14, 13, and 12 on the third, second, and first strings. Now, when you do this, your picking hand needs to be raking the strings, not picking them individually. This is bad. It needs to be a rake, okay? And then uh, the other big important piece of this is your fretting hand needs to release each note as you go. If you let any of the notes ring together, it sounds like this. And if you release the fretting hand notes, but you fail to rake with your picking hand, it goes like this. And you will not get any significant speed out of that. So you need to be practicing slow enough to make sure that each hand is doing exactly what it's supposed to. Um, you may be tempted to go faster early on and you won't have time to process that one of your hands is not doing something correctly and you'll just get stuck and you won't be able to figure out why you can't get faster. You must go very, very slow. Okay, so the opposite of that, we're gonna do an uh, upstroke and we're going to start with the 12th fret on the first string. I find that going backwards, um, going down in pitch, going up towards the sky is easier than ascending, uh, but you'll, you'll kind of find what, which one you like better. Either way, you still have to practice both versions of ascending and descending. So that's a basic A minor arpeggio to get you started. Now let's add a turnaround note like this. Right. 
So what we're doing is we're doing a downstroke for those first three notes like before, and then we're ending with an upstroke on the first string, pinky 17th fret. So we've got down, 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 up, okay? And then the opposite of that is we're gonna start with the 12th fret on the first string, and we're gonna go 12, 13, 14, and then our turnaround is gonna be the 12th fret on the third string. Up, 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 down, okay? Um, practice both of those on their own Probably the first week of sweep arpeggios, I would only focus on those two shapes, the ascending and the descending versions of a minor. Now, of course, you can move this around to any frets you want, just keep the same shape. And in fact, as you get bored, I think it's a great idea to move it around. Uh, it's good. It's good to get used to doing things like that and... Speaking of sounding cool, um, make sure you're using enough distortion, but I wouldn't go super duper crazy with it. Use just enough to, to get the sustain that you need um, without going full bore metal, unless you're like super into that. I like to use as much distortion as I need to get the sustain possible for things like this. And no more. Um, and then the other thing is generally for sweet picking, the neck pickup sounds the best. Um, it's gonna be easier if you use humbuckers typically, but I'm, I'm using all single coils, but these are Eric Johnson pickups, so they're a little bit hotter, and uh, I, I don't have really a hard time sweeping with these, and I, I like the way that it sounds. Okay, so moving on, we're gonna do a slightly easier version, which is an A minor seven arpeggio. Anytime you do um, a minor seven sweep versus just a minor sweep, it tends to be easier because there's more hammer-ons and pull-offs involved. So your picking hand gets a little bit of a break. All right, so let's try this. Okay, what's happening is we're starting on the seventh, the flat seven of the arpeggio which in this case is a G, the 12th fret of the third string. And then we're gonna hammer on to 14, our root. And then uh, we're gonna sweep across strings two and one. So we have down, hammer, down on the second string, down on the first string. And then upstroke onto 17 or 15 of the first string. That's either the root or the flat seven. So your choice. Let's start with the 15th fret. After that upstroke on the first string, pull off back to 12, up on the second, up on the third, and then we start over. Down, hammer, down, down, up, pull off, up, up. So I f that was like the first kind of fast repeating pattern that I was able to do over and over again, um, which is funny because now it's not the fastest sweep that I can do, but for a long time it, it was. Um, so let's, let's go to, this is a common three string A minor sweep. And it finally clicked for me from Anita Strauss lesson in Guitar World Magazine. And it gets rid of that, uh, hammer on on the third string. So we've got this. So we still have that pull off on the first string, but basically we're starting with the A minor uh, triad, 14, 13, 12, and then upstroke on the first string, pull off to 12, upstroke on the second string, and then here's the tricky part, you gotta go to a downstroke on the third string to start it over. So it's a, um, it's a six note pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then it starts over. So you have to end up breaking your sweep by going upstroke on the second string to downstroke on the third string. That's a little bit harder. So I found that um, almost getting that sort of circular motion in my picking hand 
helped me uh, kind of lock in that groove with that a little bit better. And it seems counterintuitive at first to do that upstroke on the second string followed by the downstroke on the third string, but I promise you, I promise you, it's really the most effective way to pull off that arpeggio, and I love doing it now. So the other place I like doing that is at the ninth fret on the third string, and this is a second inversion A minor arpeggio. It's still an A minor arpeggio. What we're doing is we're starting at the ninth fret on the third string and then going to 10 on the second string and then to eight on the first string. So that's kind of our shape and then we're finishing with 12 on the first string. So those are the two inversions of A minor that I like to use. The other one involves just one finger rolling across the same fret on three different strings, and it's really, really, really hard, and it doesn't sound that much better to me. So I'm like, why would I waste time developing that when I can already do these other two? Having those other two options is plenty for me. I'm not wasting my time with the other one. Sorry. Sorry, fast guys. Uh, y'all, y'all have fun with, with those being able to do every single arpeggio shape in every position. And I'm going to stick with the few that I know I, I can do really well. <laughs> okay. Which brings me to the diminished shape. So a diminished arpeggio, um, is, is nice because it's very similar to the minor arpeggio we just did. Okay. So let's try it starting here at the 11th fret. So uh, what's happening is we're doing the 11th fret of the third string, downstroke, hammer on to 14, and then downstroke on 13 of the second string, downstroke on 11 of the first string, upstroke on the 14th fret of the first string, and then we reverse it. And this is the exact same pattern as the A minor 7 sweep that we did, where we get a hammer on and a pull off, um, but just... Ex it's expanded, the, the actual frets you're using are a little bit different, but the idea is the exact same. And the cool thing about this shape is it repeats every three frets. It's literally the exact same four notes every three frets, okay? That's pretty neat. So that, that's a lot of fun to play. Whatever your highest fret is that you played in your first shape becomes the lowest fret in your next shape. And it's literally only, it seems like it's uh, 20 notes, but it's only four. It's only four total pitches that are being played. So that's really neat. Um, the other version of that is we can do that diminished without that initial hammer on, kind of like we do with A minor. And it goes like this. So let's get into the five string shapes. And I only use two, just like we did with the three string shapes, um, starting at root position and second inversion, I do the exact same shapes for the five string. So here's root position A minor. So we're going 12 on the fifth string, hammer to 15, 14, 14 on the next two. You start with the tip of your ring finger and then roll to the next string which takes a little bit of time. And then we go to the 13th fret of the second string and the 12th fret of the first string. And then our turnaround is the 17th fret of the first string. And then we just reverse it. And again, I would practice those ascending and descending separately at very, very slow speeds for long periods of time before you attempt going faster and before you attempt putting them together. The other version of that I like is um, it, it also starts on the 12th fret. Really, it should start with a hammer on from the seventh fret of the fifth string to 12. But that's a pretty tough shape to get. So I usually just start from the 12th fret of the fifth string like I did with the other shape, but I'm using my pinky now instead. So we've got 12, 10, 9, 10, 8, 12. Um, and then the final thing I like to do is I like to combine those two shapes. So I might go up with this one, slide down to eight, do another pull off 12 to eight, and then descend 
in that arpeggio. You can go the opposite way as well. I'm going to attempt it, but I'm not very good at it. So I never use that one. Um, I only use it going <laughs> the, the opposite way. But I, I suppose I could work that one up to speed if I, I wanted to. Um, and then finally, a, a slightly easier version of that is if we do A minor 7 starting on the fifth string. OK, so this is nice because you get three different hammer-ons. We get 12 to 15 on the fifth string, then to 14 on the fourth string, then 12 to 14 hammer on on the third string, 13 by itself on the second string, 12 to 17, or 12 to 15 on the first string. Now, I do this in a way, you could do all downstrokes for this. I do this in a way that Greg Howe taught me, which is with hybrid picking. So I go down, hammer, middle finger pluck, down, hammer, middle finger pluck down, hammer. I like that a, a lot, so I'll use that. It's not a full sweep, but it's nice when you get frustrated by doing your full sweeps to kind of do that version. It's like, all right, I still kind of got a bit of a sweep there, so that's the, the A minor 7 um, five string sweep. And that's it. Those are the only sweep arpeggio patterns I really ever use. Find a few things that work really well for you and just do them to the absolute best of your ability. You don't have to master every single thing. That's kind of comforting for me that I can just be really good at a few sweep arpeggios. I stick to three string and five string, three string and five string shapes and I stick to minor and diminished patterns, and, uh, and, and that's it. So I hope that's helpful. I hope that gives you enough to get started with this. Hey, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Let me know what you'd like to see next. It, and I'm still working on my sweep arpeggios, but it took like 12 years for it to finally like click. I hope that this helps you, and I hope it helps somebody out there that feels ready to give up with their, their sweep picking. All right, see ya.